All right. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, the markets don't suck today. That's good. Day to day doesn't really matter, but it's still nice. It's still nice when it's good, opposed to when it sucks. Uh, although, if you're buying, you want it to suck. And actually, well, there's a lot of times you want it to suck. <laughs> Crypto is very strange. Actually, financial markets in general are very strange. We're all just stealing from our neighbors. Okay, Mark, what's going on? First in the hopper. Tim, Joss Fine News. Michael Schultz, ooh. I like that uh, snuggle buddy right there. I'm very much looking forward to that drop. Let's see. And for those of you, for the, um, uh, you guys know, for the OGs that that I said, hey, give me your stuff and I'll get you on the whitelist, you are whitelisted for the Snuggle Buddies, which, by the way, the first drop is only 500 pieces. And it's not some spammy generative. They actually did all the artwork themselves. Really cool. Like each individual piece, they generated it. It's wicked. All right, Phil, what's going on? Don't drive into oncoming traffic. Tim, Tony. Jasnock, what's up? Bunny, whoa. <laughs> That's a lot of exclamations. A lot of exclamations. Frank, Joe Fernandez, que onda? Demayan, what's up? Amy. All right, cool. So on Theta, it shows that it's going, but it doesn't show anything else. So, but it's it's really quiet. So we'll leave it quiet over there on Theta. Uh, tube Dev Pipeline, what's up? Justin, and let's see, you should have gotten your shirt already. Okay, cool. Or it should have gone out. All right. So today, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about, well, we're going to look at the markets. We're going to talk about not rationalizing or justifying your gambling uh, assets you must own for the spring. And then, you know, kind of random news and stuff like that. It'll be simple. Okay. Let's do our little morning uh, bumper, and then we will be right back. Bump, bump, bump. So you know what? <clears throat> Interestingly, um, I'm going to look around in here for a second because it says somewhere, it says that we can, we, they have their own background music. Let's see if we can find it. Okay. But until we find their music, we'll play our music. Let's see. It wouldn't be there. It wouldn't be here. Let's see. It wouldn't be there. It might be. In brand, let's see. Names, overlays, video clips, no. Background, mm, background music, interesting. Okay, let's see. Should we have, should we try one of theirs? The only reason I say this is because with their music, I'm not gonna get screwed for rights violations, even though my friend was the one who made the music. So one of my producers, Eric, he he made the actual music. We all of our background music's made by Eric, him, himself. So you would say, Well, my God, man, how can you get a rights violation if your buddy made the music? Yeah, good question. I don't know the answer. I don't know if anybody does. So let's see. We have a few choices. Let's see. This is acoustic cinematic. Ooh. Hmm. It's kind of weirdly morningy, uplifting. I don't know, man. I'm not feeling that. Okay, let's just keep looking. Dance pop. This is gonna be fancy. Mm. What do you think? Okay, so here's what we'll do. 
as you guys hear this random music. Okay, so I, okay, oh, I got it. I got it. So my volume controls only have to do with the peripheral stuff. This little music stuff is its own separate little volume control. <laughs> okay, this is cool, yeah. All right, well, anyway, we got back. We got we got background music where they won't boot us. Okay, let's see. Um, I was at uh, Bitcoin Candy. What's going on? Todd B. Uh, Double Dots. What up, Double Dot from Hanoi? What? Well, welcome. Um, Sebastian, what's going on, buddy? Crypto strategy with Florida Dent. Let me see. Uh, <laughs> tell the truth. It was you that borrowed the cash to buy the ape, then collected the one million in ape coin, paid off the loan and jammed. By the, did they? <clears throat> what did they do? Did they buy just enough apes to get enough coins, and then just dump the apes, and then just kept the coins? So they just borrowed to get the coins, I guess. Mm. I mean, I I think the coin is pretty much useless. Well, it's it's pretty much it's useless. Let's not let's not paint it up. It's it's absolutely useless. <laughs> but. Whatever. The same celebrity rubes that like apes are rubing into the coin. What are they going to do? Is Mark Cuban going to trade it with some dancer for so they can trade sweaters? Like, what's the, what is the point of that stupid thing? Anyway, maybe I just don't get it. Maybe I'm too, uh, maybe I'm aging out of crypto because I've been, I've been in crypto so long that I'm just aging out of the cool stuff. Because really, because there's not enough ape NFT projects. So clearly I don't get it. Uh, let's see. Uh, Joe C, what's up? Casperia Cloud. Hello, Adam. What up? Hey, Adam, are you going to try to become one of those um, for the Donna, the D A N A uh, token distribution thing? Are you going to try to become one of those stake pools? Let me know if you are. That would be interesting because maybe we could all load up to you instead of loading up in some rando pool to get these free tokens. The other thing, too, is on the Donna one. For those of you that are chasing it, I'm not sure, but I think maybe we give up our ADA rewards. And if that's the case, I'm not doing it. I'm not trading my Cardano rewards for some rando project. If it's the same way that Sunday Swap worked, where we just are in a terrible pool that gives us crappy rewards, but yet we get Sunday Swap, which it barely worked out. When I did all the math on it, 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 it was maybe... 20% better to get the Sunday swap and then just dump the Sunday swap tokens. So I dumped, like I said I would, I dumped half of mine, not just day one, like minute one. Like as fast as I was, I was online with somebody else. I think Nara and I were going back and forth in Telegram and we were like, go transfer as quick as you can dump. Like we were trying to dump the coins as quick as possible. So I dumped half of mine as quick as possible. And I ended up making a little bit Then I just pushed those tokens back to Daedalus where they can be staking. So anyway, Adam, uh, text and stakes. If you are doing any of those kinds of things, let us know because we'd much rather delegate to you. Captain Cardano, good to see you. Uh, tell the Admiral uh, we are all looking forward to seeing him. Patrick, what's going on? Bought three apes. So he bar okay. And I mean, if it if it made money, good on him. Did he just get quiet? Oh, I get it. It's up. Got it. Okay. Um, it's, it is a very, it's a very hype tune. Gets you excited to trade. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jose, Jose Jewel, Jose Jewel, Juice, Juice Jewel, Hooday, Gordon Bennett. What's up? Expat, Matt. Yeah, no, that is, it's just, I'm not messing with NFT stuff right now. I'm only collecting pieces that I really love the artwork. So, um, I'm dumping all my trippies. Um, whenever I can just get a little bit more than I paid. I just want to be out. I think the whole project is terrible. I think the guys running it are terrible and, and borderline other stuff. So, cool. I'm on my way out. I enjoyed it in the beginning. I like Rui Duarte. I like his artwork. So I'll probably keep one of each piece, like one of each of his characters. So like It's like 14 characters. I'll keep like one of each. Everything else got to go. Um, bad project bad community the i mean awful community some of the most keyboard commando karen 
kind of, uh, you know, mods you can have. If you're in a group and you ask questions about math and they have a problem with that, look, you can be belligerent with your question asking. You can ask D-bag questions. But if you're asking math-related questions and they don't want to answer you, they put you on timeout, they cancel, like whatever, it's because they don't know or they have something to hide. And if they don't know, that's even worse. So, and this is this is more a product of what's going on in the NFT space because we're trying, we're probably looking for far too much value in NFTs and thinking that there's anything beyond the JPEG is probably pretty silly of us. So it's on us. Uh, the NFT space was a, a belligerent place where we all threw money stupidly. But I'm, I'm returning to my old NFT roots. Nifty Gateway. I know the Winklevi. They're very D-baggish, but this is one thing they got right. And Gemini is pretty good too. But this is one thing they got right. And that is Nifty Gateway is really nice. It's a lot of, it's it's a cool place. You find really cool artwork. They do have these recurring artists that are really good that I that I tend to really like. And I'm, I mean, I'm actually now getting offers that are way over what I paid for a lot of the stuff that I bought. So it was kind of cool just to see the offers be like, ooh, I could take that money. I don't, I could. And, but it's real art. It's not these 10K generative spammy. There's hundreds of thousands of different apes if you count up all the different eight projects, mutants, and this is and that's, and the spinoffs, and the reverses, and the flips, and all that, like I'm, I'm over, I'm over these generative projects unless they're very specifically interesting artwork, like Karafuru, really cool, and uh, the uh, Snuggle Buddies, they're like fully 3D rendered, really cool, and kind of creepy too, kind of haunting and creepy. Um, so those are really cool. So yeah, buy stuff that you like the artwork, but but I would just start, I would stay away from any of these 10K projects. I'm out. Uh, let's see, Jay Finley, what's up? All right, so yeah, why token? They can never answer that. Like, why is there, <laughs> why is there a token for bored apes? <laughs> so stupid. Uh, Breakfast Leadership, what's up? Cisco, <clears throat> at, see Adam, I like the Dana Project. Yeah, <clears throat> see? You know, they have a group and what they're doing is supposedly it's the smaller pools because they wanted really decentralized Cardano network. There's a lot of cool things coming for Cardano, but they're not here yet and they don't exist yet. And the developer community right now, it's at least the projects that we we're seeing pretty weak. I mean, we got to be honest, it's weak. Um, but IOH, IOG and the team and everything they're doing at AGIX and that whole team you know, uh, Singularity Net <clears throat> and the whole team at, at Singularity Dow. If you guys have been watching when we go through prices, Singularity Dow is doing pretty good. Why? Because they're coming to the end of their teaser of their kind of data collection period where they've been testing and it's been performing really well. And they're about to add in uh, shorting to the other side of the equation. So that might look pretty good. Cosmo Michael, what up? So, yeah. And, you know, we were going to have a show. We try to get it done this weekend, but we our schedules were off. But uh, Jungle Inc. and I are going to do a show together, and uh, we'll we'll have it. It'll be very cool. Um, many of you know Jungle. He's great. He's one of the few rational, rational people that's been very supportive and invested in the XRP community. He's one of the, like, the he's kind of like the radio voice. If there was, like, a a radio voice of the XRP community. He's the radio voice, but he's not a ridiculous, a ridiculous. Can you be, is that like a thing? Like you have populist, a ridiculous. He's not a ridiculous, right? He's very common sense. He's, he's very rarely pie in the sky. He's very down to earth. So be very interesting to talk to him just about the whole crypto space. It's not going to be an XRP only show or whatever. But it'll be very interesting to talk to him and, and kind of see from his perspective what he thinks the world looks like in the in the cryptoverse. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah. All right. Okay. Good. We're gonna keep this one then for for a little while. We have we have like eight other eight other musics that we can play because of the fine people at Streamyard that gave us these musics. Uh, Surf Tech, what's going on? Chris made a post. It's like a post. Yeah, it could be. It could be. Um, okay, Jim, what's going on, buddy? Scorpion, good. Scorpion. 
uh, dumped almost all the CTs, but stuck with some rare trippies. Yeah, if you have anything rare, you just hold it. You just hold anything rare. But the community got real sketchy. I'll tell you how funny it was. Somebody <clears throat> on Twitter created a fake. This is how you know you've it's not th this is not a good thing but this is how you know you've bad made it in crypto is when someone fakes your i don't have like a lot of twitter followers i have like maybe ten thousand, and it's all mostly probably robots if i was to guess there's probably like 15 real people and 9,985 robots but anyway somebody made a fake nick black account and they were like kind of cussing out the trippies project and then like one of the trippies guys got on there and like fired back. I'm like, you dummy, you know from my account that you kicked out of your discord that that's not my account. Like Nick Black with a little American flag is not me <laughs> for, for so many reasons. You know, you could just read the, the little profile thing or maybe if that was too complicated, you could go to any one of my OpenSea accounts. Or if that was too complicated, my Instagram with has the same name. Or if that was too complicated, dot, 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 dummy. It was one of the Booth brothers that got on there like, oh, yeah, well, blah, blah, blah. Go go back to your honey farm, you creep. Anyway, I thought that was funny. Uh, let's see. Uh, should you willing to change your mind about projects? Yes. I, I will turn, I will change my opinion on any project. I'm even willing to change my mind on, on Ripple. Uh, I mean, I'm willing to change my mind. Now, remember, Ripple's the company, not the token. XRP is the token. You can't, you can't hate on a token because it, it's weird. You're like, I hate this token. Well, we don't hate any token. You would, you would be not maybe interested in the team behind the token. The team at Ripple, I feel like there's like 400 good people and two awful, awful people. And if those two people were gone, I would be pro pro ripple and maybe uh, maybe xrp ish the only reason i say that is because they would need a huge sea change in the direction of their company um competing for this bridge asset thing that's over with because that market doesn't exist anymore that every single project can pretty much um frictionlessly do bridge transactions you know, like you don't need bridge assets anymore all that stuff is done through swaps you know, on chain or on side chain. So th there's not really a technical reason for that, that you would use XRP over any of the other coins. It, I mean, it's good, but so are, so are all the other coins. You just look at whatever's the, whatever platform has the cheapest fees, you would use that. And it might in some cases be XRP. And in those cases you would transfer XRP, but, but let me reduce all this. There could be some cool use cases that the company could set up right now. Ripple, the company, could do all sorts of cool things. Like I thought years ago, they should have gotten into FX settlement. Just settling FX transactions for um, uh, currency currency swaps and currency transactions in the F foreign exchange markets, because that'd be a good market for them. Again, I think technology, you know, software caught up to them. They don't have an advantage anymore. And I don't, I don't know that David Schwartz in a vacuum is creating very much. I mean, I think he's trying to make the XRP ledger better, but I don't know if he alone is enough. Um, he's awesome, but no one in a vacuum is, is great, uh, unfortunately. So I think probably most of his talent is uh, is wasted. Anyway, but I would be willing, if they got some kind of big corporate deal or some enterprise deal with, with an FX exchange or something to be the sole, I don't know, software, gateway, settlement provider, whatever, that could be, that could be pretty awesome uh, for the company then where <clears throat> the, it's a, it remains to be seen what that means for the token. No one yet is sure how this court case is going to end up with XR with Ripple. I feel like they're not going to be able to have full control over that big pile of XRP because that seems to be the problem, right? You wouldn't have guys like uh, Chris Grand Larceny and Brad uh, Bread Garlic Mouth basically buying and selling at a discount and st stealing if they didn't have access to all those tokens that didn't exactly run through the investors. For instance, the investors at Ripple, they didn't exactly vote on this. Like, Jed just spun it up. 
and Chris and Jed each split nine. They, they split 19 billion of those tokens. Those those two guys. And McCaleb was willing to give his back, and Chris Larson was not willing to give his back. You read that whole story. It's pretty weird. Anyway, so. Who knows what all that turns out to be, but anytime you're jammed up in court with the SEC, it's probably not great. Um, so, yeah. Biotech Breakout, Sniper Princess. What's up, Club ADD? Good to see you. Oh, get I get it. ADD, which could also be ADD. Well done. Um, okay. JR, what's going on? And, but, 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 funding project. Okay. Uh, what's deep funding that AGIX just launched? Um, well, they're, they're trying to, you know, create a fertile environment for fi funding projects that are going to expand um, AI and, and artificial intelligence as it moves towards um, artificial general intelligence, which is what we're all kind of after. Should we try a different, um, let me do something real quick. It's a Monday. We can do whatever we want on a Monday. Um, let's look at, this is another one called Dater. Okay, so we like the second one. Dance Pop we like. Okay, we're gonna try this one now. Oh no. What do you think? It's a little quiet. We'll give it a second. Hmm. We'll give it a second. It we can change. We can make an adjustment. We'll see. We'll see how it is. It's kind of mellow. All right. Um mm. Crypto for Life, what's up? Uh, Michael, let's see. So guy's still in the hospital. Oh, congrats. Baby was born at 6.07. Hopefully my voyage into crypto sets him up for the... Oh, nice. Um, yeah, well, good luck and uh, good good safety and good health to the little one. Let's see, smash 18, watch. <laughs> oh, who cares, man? We don't monetize this, so it doesn't really matter. Um, if people like it or don't like it, it's not it's not really material. I do get these weird emails. Hey, it's that's one of the new scams is they say, just send us your wallets and all this kind of stuff. And we'll just, we'll just give you like 1500 bucks to advertise for the, they're like, yeah, right. And it's always like, hey, crypto and coffee. We, we, your videos like so much. I'm like, oh no, this is Google Translate. This is a Google Translate attack. Oh, let's see. What did you <laughs> My one wasn't. Yeah. Yeah, she probably wasn't having that. Name him. <laughs> name him uh, Bitcoin. That ought to get him beat up. He'll be tough as nails, though, when he gets out of high school. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yes, congrats, congrats. Uh, sounds, yep, congrats, congrats. Good morning, good morning. Sounds like a funeral home. It does sound like a funeral home. I haven't been in a funeral home in a while, but maybe that's what they sound like. And Belinda, okay, yeah, okay. So, I'm get, I'm guessing the feedback is we're gonna switch this one. Let's go with <laughs> feeding the ducks. Let's try this. Okay, we're feeding the ducks. Child of the corn, yeah. I'm looking forward to Firestarter, by the way. Demajou, what's up? Yes, congrats, congrats, everybody. Congrats, Michael. Let's see. Uh, went to the Punchline Comedy in Sac last night and had a great time being away from my computer. What? Away from your computer? What are you, some kind of weirdo? <laughs> and uh, Brian, good to see you. Okay, cool. So let's um, let's go look at markets now that now that Brian's here. Uh, I think we can go ahead and get started. So let me kill this banner. Get away, banner. All right. So what's going on? We are going to talk a, a little bit. I'm going to spend a few minutes just talking about some notes that I took when I was listening to some stuff, kind of comparing the information age versus the industrial revolution and what, you know, what you might be able to expect out of, uh, out of the crypto space, just out of, out of tech investing in general, kind of cool stuff. All right. Uh, the Bitcoin 41 two cool. It's, it's down a fraction on the day. It actually did not S the bed over the weekend. Again, if you, if you read any of the terrible journalism in crypto it's all it's so bad i mean it's so bad 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 but of course because because bitcoin went up <clears throat> it said deep sell-off expected over the weekend and then you read into it it's like 
some somebody in co- second year in college wrote an article, some obscure article that like based on my 13 days of experience in crypto, I'm pretty sure Bitcoin's going to go down. Why? Because it went up. Oh God. <laughs> so, well, that didn't happen. So I hope that person goes and does the other two or three or six years of college they need. And then maybe they can write articles that are more relevant. Okay. Um, so Bitcoin, it got up to 42 and change. It's back around 41. It's starting to melt up. We've had, you know, five months of downward pressure of just slowly bleeding pain. And yeah, and so here we are. So great. Uh, and let me see. Uh, Hoover Brian, what's up? Whack Design, what's going on? Oh, you can see Tommy Chong. You know what's crazy? Tommy did a... Um, he did a, a music video with a buddy of mine, um, that group, um, uh, like Kipia, he was on one of their videos. And so, um, one of the songs that they were all on together, um, Alex Taylor, my buddy Brando, and he were in, I think it's called Voodoo Woman. Anyway, if you're, if you're a fan, like Kipia Voodoo Woman, fun. Okay. Uh, let's see, this picks up some HIX and new because they're dirt cheap. Yeah. As did I. Last week was an AGIX and Nunet week for me, as well as a a Cosmos. No, no, no. Sorry. I picked up Algorand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. I picked up Algorand just below 70 cents. I did Algo at, at 69, 68, 69 cents. I did, uh, and then I did one, and then I did uh, AGIX and Nunet. Okay. So anyway, the Bitcoin's doing fine. It's up on the week. It's up on the month. We're finally having a green month. We'll start to see these months start turning over again as these markets get better. Uh, and then who knows? We might even look at some decent quarters. And uh, it would only take a couple of good weeks, a couple of weeks of enthusiasm. It'd be interesting to see if tax season has any effect. Um, yeah, guess what? The same people that took all that free money last year and punted it into the markets – some of them are going to owe some money back. You know, people that got stimulus, you have to pay tax on that. I don't know if people just thought it was free checks or whatever, but yeah, you got to pay tax on that. So we'll see. Uh, so my guess is April, probably not a great month, um, but it would be not a great month in the dummy coins because the dummy coins is where most of these people punted. People weren't taking their stimmy checks and putting it in Bitcoin or Ethereum. Or Cardano. They were putting it in sheep. <laughs> oh, that guy, by the way, the like the guy that the owner of sheep or like the head dude or whatever. One of the guys like tried, did some NFT launch and it was a complete failure disaster. Just dumpster fire. <laughs> Surprising, right? F- from a project as, as incredible as Shiba Inu. All right. Uh, what's going on? Uh, Ethereum's doing fine. It's about to uh, knock on into the 3K. It looks like it's kind of knocking on the door. We'll see. Um, still a vibrant NFT community. That's not going to change anytime soon. So, yeah. What will change is these other layer one projects as they come out with Ethereum converters and things like that. It's still the easiest thing is still to use Ethereum to buy, swap, trade NFTs. So imagine a world where that's all that Ethereum is used for. It's still a great use case. It'll still do fine. So that is that. Uh, Let me also say hello to Debbie and Michael. Well, hello to you both. All right. Uh, So Ethereum's knocking on the door 3,000. Cardano, 90 cents. And people say, well, Cardano's way down. It's 25% down from, you know, last year. Yeah, it should be. Because they have not released anything of value yet. Now, I'm not talking about the team. Charles and the team are doing what they need to do to create financial identity, digital identity, and governance as a service in Africa and Central South America. Great. They're doing everything they need to do. The developer community, especially in DeFi around Cardano, is weak. The NFT community is weaker. It's awful. I mean, awful. But... You know, it doesn't matter so much. 
Uh, DeFi is low hanging fruit, but we all know that DeFi is, most of DeFi is spammy garbage where they shower you with stupid tokens or they run it like a Ponzi scheme. And it does tend to push the price up, which makes people happy. Look at Terra Luna and that whole ecosystem. Is it sustainable? Probably not. I mean, not probably not. By, by every piece of math and data we have, you know, going back to the beginning of math, um, Terra and, and that whole ecosystem is not sustainable. But if enough people keep coming in the front door, you know, again, like Social Security, as long as there's more people paying in than exiting, you're fine. But if that ever turns over, passive income uh, indexation effect, pa not income, passive indexation effect. If if the marginal buyer in a market becomes the margin, the, the, the seller of last resort of only resort, then the whole thing crashes, period, full stop. And when there's an unwind, if you're trying to burn one thing to get to save, if you're trying to to buy and burn an asset in order to maintain a peg, when the asset runs out, you're done. And you say, well, we'll just create more of it. Okay, well, if you create more of the funny money asset to burn, you're done as well through debasement. So I don't think there's any way that Luna is sustainable. That whole ecosystem is, it's just not mathematically sustainable. Now, you will get all sorts of people that are like, yeah, 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 I'm making money, which is cool, but I'm making money does not equal sustainability. And if we, us, are buying, because we are value investors and we're buying for three to five years from now, that's not a sustainable project. I don't want to be in a project that I have to check my email or have to check the news every single day to find out when, oh, oh you missed it at 3 a.m. last night, everybody hit the exit. And you, and you didn't do it. So you're out. Everything. I don't want assets like that. There's so many assets that are quality that you don't need to own every single thing that goes up. And also in a market where the entire market's going down, if there's one asset that continues to go up against everything else, and, and then you look into it and you go, well, the math doesn't seem to work out. The, 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 the economics of it don't seem to work out. It, it all seems like a failed bit and it's the only one going up, you, you might start asking yourself, wh why are people so enthusiastic about something that has a mathematical likelihood of complete failure and destruction? You realize that it's more just kind of spammy DeFi gambling, and that's fine. But if the whole market is selling off, that should tell you that on the aggregate, most assets will probably be selling off. And if one is going against the grain, it's, it's, you, you want to ask, oh, did they solve, did they solve something that no one else has ever solved? No, it's just a new Ponzi scheme. That's, that's not innovation. That's just a Ponzi scheme. All right. So, uh, what does Cardano need to do? Well, kind of they, as a company, they need to keep doing what they're doing, build reliable, sustainable products. I, I think they need to get the token conversion software and the uh, Solidity code converter and all that kind of cool gear so that other projects could port over if they wanted to, they need to get that sorted. And I think that's a huge, that's a huge line in the sand. That's the Rubicon. I think if they cross that successfully and, and then it's not only having the tech, but it's people starting to use it. You know, I think Nier has that same issue. Nier has incredible tech, but they haven't gotten this big adoption yet. Um, by the way, for those of you that do like Near, it is now available to swap into or purchase on Nexo. Nexo seems to be onboarding lots and lots of cool tokens. Some dumb ones too, but who cares? You're an exchange. You're just trying, they're trying to do what they're trying to do. And the spreads are tighter, I found, on Nexo than like with Ethereum based assets on um, MetaMask. So there's that. Oh, and MetaMask is eventually coming with a token. But you probably won't be able to spend it on anything because they've they made this big deal like this is not going to be a cash grab okay well then don't even give us a token then if you have all sorts of stupid crappy stipulations on it i don't want it if you're gonna you're gonna try to tell us what uh, shut up anyway so okay uh so cardano is doing fine it's having a good week but um back out the performance of bitcoin back out six percent so you're still up you know about nine about 10, uh, well, nine or 10. So Ethereum and Cardano doing fine. Polkadot actually having 
you know, a not negative week. There's a surprise, right? Not even a negative month. Wow. Still down 50% from its highs. So if you think you miss Polkadot, my problem with Polkadot is uh, I don't know what they're doing. I feel like they're high most of the time and they don't feel like communicating it. That's also, that's almost my problem with Algorand. I just don't think they're high all the time. They just don't feel, they're too arrogant to communicate what they're doing. I know they're one of their top marketing guys and he, they won't, he, he's getting paid for nothing. Barry, if you're out there, bro, like you, but you're getting paid for nothing. Whatever they're paying you, it's infinitely too much. I can say this because Barry's got money. He had money before he went on that team and he will have money after they fire him because buddy, you're no good at your job. I love you, bro, but you're no good at your job. Sometimes we got to be honest with ourselves. <laughs> um, okay. So as it comes, Michael, what's going on? As it comes from um, uh, interest on new deposits on Nexo, they're having to reconfigure the U S client offerings due to some, rules, structure, problems. They don't want to get in a situation like Celsius and BlockFi, which by the way, are both in different levels of indictment by the US government. So I think Nexo is doing it right. They said, you know what, pause, let's hit the brakes. We'll figure this out. And then we will redeploy our product to the uh, American audience there. Okay, um, let us keep going. Uh, we don't care about Sheeb. Dot would be interesting. I mean, Dot would be interesting if they would communicate to us. I, I don't know. I guess what I'm saying is I'm not sure it's a core investment at this point. It's definitely a protocol. It's definitely in the bucket. Would I weight it the same as Ethereum and Cardano and Near uh, Cosmos or Algorand? No, I no longer would. Um, I get it, 20 billion market cap, that's great. Gavin Wood, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, bro, at a certain point, results matter. At a certain point, you need to kind of put up, and they haven't been putting up, you know, oh, engine launched some crap on a parachain. Ooh, there's another project that's pretty much wholly done, done nothing. Um, Avalanche does really well. I don't follow Avalanche because it's a little spammy, um, but it probably belongs in the bucket of protocols. I just think it moved up too fast and it's not, it's not something that I would buy right now. I don't think, I don't know from what I've seen from Avalanche, it doesn't look like it's going to be one of like the fangs of the future, but you never know. Um, it's, it's a VC pump. Look, a lot of these projects are VC pumps. Um, and you have to understand, they'll just get in, they'll pump the project, they'll put it, they'll get all their exchange buddies. It's just a, a very controlled, it's not insider trading, it's just marketing. It's no different than when Chameth uh, puts some, some garbage spack together and then goes and does the rounds on all the television channels like CNBC and tells and says the word disruptor 4,500 times and tries to be the down to earth billionaire. Look, bro, you... Cool, but you got lucky on Bitcoin. Don't try to make it like you're some kind of genius who calls the market. He's he's a pump and dump specialist. Chain Math is a pump and dump specialist. You guys get this, right? So when you just be careful, be careful with guys like that. Oh, by the way, he needs to be careful uh, that he does not go down with some of these SPACs that are going to be targeted by the SEC, which is coming to a courtroom in the southern district of new york coming soon all right uh matic layer two you need it uh the polygon network continues to expand um i like it and there's only a few layer twos that are worth you know owning and so matic is one of them near you need to own it um if it's on nexo it, it stands to reason that it's only a matter of time and some jurisdictional uh, yuck, muckety muck that it will probably end up on coinbase it's coinbase ventures project one, they're one of the key kind of underlying investors. I think they will continue to put money into the project. Um, I think Coinbase Ventures is not really being factored into the price of coin. And I think you, I, I was listening to somebody or not listening. I was reading an article. They're like, was it Chanos? He's going to go, he's, I'm shorting coin. I don't know if I would be shorting coin right now. Um, 
I think that's that's someone talking their book and trying to talk a position because I don't know why these guys get out. I mean, I know why they do, but it seems a little scammy. If you run money, you should not be on CNBC talking about what you're going to do. You're just you're just trying to talk the market into your I've always thought that was bad behavior. I don't know why they allow that, actually. I think if you manage money, your results should be your results. You should be able to publish your fund, let's say, three months after results or whatever. But I don't think you should be able to get on and talk about, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, if it's, if it's directly supporting you, if other people buy into it. I don't know. That just feels scammy to me. That feels like kind of a weird musical chairs type stuff. Brady, what's up? What's going on, buddy? All right, so yeah, that was all. That always just felt like really bad behavior. I don't know why they allow it. There's a lot of bad behavior in crypto, and I don't know why they allow it. It makes me angry. Suze, well, you're in luck. I haven't cussed at all today, and I probably won't. And uh, yeah, someone someone uh, twi- tweeted tweeted me and said, "Hey, why do you get so angry on Mondays?" I'm not angry, bro. I'm never angry. This stuff's not. Man, I'm rich. I ain't angry about nothing. Sometimes it's fun to go on a rant. You guys like to rant? Rants are fun. Um, okay. I've been swapping for it. I, I, I tried Uniswap, but there's so few pairs for it that my Uniswap transactions, JR, were cra- were breaking. They weren't going through, and I was just losing money. And I have found that doing the tra- that those same transactions on MetaMask work just fine. So that's how I've been doing it. So when I get, when I have been buying and I have been buying new net, um, that's where I've been doing it. So I've been buying new net and AGIX through MetaMask in separate wallet, like in different wallets. I have a bunch of different wallets and I've been using different ones to do different things because part of their token thing, their distribution, whatever punishes whale, it's whale punishment. It's, it's social, you know, socialism at its finest, even though we're decentralized and we're all about capitalism. Apparently not. So that's my only complaint with with NewNet and all this kind of stuff is they're, they're you know, let's ameliorate any social tension by by punishing people with big wallets. So let's punish the people that have been supporting AGIX the longest with the most amount of runway, which you use, by the way, to hire, to, to uh, office space, to pay for the lights, to computers and all. Everything you do is paid with public money, public money that came from AGIX investors. So punishing AGIX investors that have been supporting you for the longest time is stupid. It's stupid. There's no amount of game theory. I don't care. You know what? I will go head to head with uh, Kabir, which I like, by the way. I like the whole team. I will go head to head with Dr. Ben Gortzel. I will go head to head with Charles. There is no, in my opinion, good argument that stands up against other than publicity, other than we're here for the little man publicity, which is a bunch of BS. There is no good mathematical reasoning behind punishing whales other than to make the little guppies happy. And guess what the guppies do the second they get the air to, the airdrops? They sell them because they don't care. They just want some free tokens. Look at new wallet creation. You want to do the right thing? Look at people that created AGIX wallets in the last 16 seconds versus people that have held AGIX for, I don't know, two years. Pay them. Why don't you why don't you disproportionately pay people that have held the asset longer? Doesn't that seem like it makes more sense to protect the integrity of the ecosystem? Like not your Johnny come lately's. Doesn't make any sense. Yeah, um, there are times when MetaMask works really well. Um, it's, but it's yeah, it's late at night or it's, it's kind of these weird, weird times. But I just watch the gas. I have a little gas meter. I have a widget. I've got widget. Like right now, I can tell you the gas is 50. The base fee is 53.4 GUI. So, yeah, there you go. Um, Yes, a straight percentage of what you own would be fair. That would be absolutely fair, Sebastian. But what they did is the bigger the wall, the bigger wallets got a slightly smaller percentage. Which feels like an F you to the people that have been in it a while. Like, no offense. Okay, here's a good example. Mike, you got 5,000 tokens. 
What if I had 5,000 tokens, but I've had those 5,000 tokens for two and a half years because I've been in it since the beginning. So, so I'm not, I'm not arguing against rich. This isn't a rich versus poor thing. It's a support and integrity thing. So Michael, if you had had your 5,000 tokens for a year and someone the day before the airdrop registration bought 5,000 tokens, do you feel like you guys are on even like you guys both have the same amount of support for AGI for singularity net. See, I would say, well, no, probably the, the Michael that has owned the tokens for a year is showing more enthusiasm. He's wearing the, he's wearing the Jersey. He's got the pom poms for a whole year versus the Johnny come lately. But yes, at the very bare minimum, you don't, you don't, celebrate or appreciate or compensate long-term support you just say forget all that we'll take the johnny come lately's then it should be an even distribution percentage of x amount of tokens period but you don't go oh well the more tokens you got the less percentage you're going to get why so you want me to break up all my wallets into a bunch of different smaller wallets in order to game the system because this which is what i had to do so I made five MetaMask accounts with five wallets full of AGIX instead of my one big one, which would have just sat there. And so now because of that, tons of my AGIX is no longer staking with AGIX, which seems like the opposite intended effect. So no, time was not a factor. Didn't matter how long you've been a supporter, they don't care. Or it's not that they don't care, they just... The more tokens you have, the more you are punished. Is that kind of socialized, socializing of losses, socializing of winnings, punishing the whales, all that bull crap. It's just bad math. Go back, go to the very beginning. Henry Hazlitt's Economics in One Lesson. Everybody should have listened to this, by the way. Economics in One Lesson. It's probably where you would probably, it's where you would start your your voyage in finance. I think a lot of people would do really good to listen to that. It's like seven hours long. It's on YouTube. It's free. We love free. <laughs> yeah, they, they should have included time, but they did the opposite. They discarded time and punished big wallets. Weird. Um, okay. So uh, registration. Yeah, registration is coming. That's a good point. Crypto Gamer uh, uh, on 420. <laughs> they did that on purpose. God. Uh, so yeah, okay. Um, so here's what I'm looking at real quick, and then I do want to talk a little bit about some some of the opportunity. Okay, let's talk about the spring must own list. Okay, here's what you got to own. I'm not going to go through and say what markets did, what markets didn't. We get it. Okay, we're in a down market. We've been in a down market for five months. Here's what you got to own. You need to own between 25 and 30 percent. Well, listen, let me let me back that out. You can do whatever the 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 truck you want, but me. This is, this is what in my personal portfolio, this is what I'm owning about 25 to 30%. Actually, let's go to, as we talk about this, let me go to a different music. Let's go to, okay, it's fun. It's like a little Charlie Brown feel. All right. Um, I think you need to own. I think I need to own, that's how I got to reword it. I think I, me, need to own 25 to 30% Bitcoin, period, full stop, sell options against a third of it. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is going to be saved. This I haven't cussed at all. I'm going to, I'm replacing my curse words with other words that rhyme with it. Uh, ship, truck, uh, oh, those are the two bad ones. <laughs> okay, uh, you need to own some Ethereum, uh, like it or hate it. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. It is the NFT commerce token. Uh, the Cardano, you need to own an even distribution. I think 50% of your portfolio needs to be infrastructure play. You have level zero, which is internet, and you have layer one, which is all of these infrastructure assets. Ethereum, Cardano, Polkadot, Near, Cosmos, Algorand, um, there are probably some other ones in there like AVAX. I think it's run too far too fast. I'm not interested in it, but it does belong in there to some, to some extent. Even them out, keep it easy for your mind. 50% of your portfolio needs to be infrastructure. 
you, you just this is a consistent winning strategy. Are you going to win as big as the gamblers? No, but guess what you're not going to do? You're not going to lose everything like the gamblers lose. If you overload into an asset and it collapses, everything you've done collapses. It doesn't matter about being up. It only matters when you exit into a hard asset. And I'm not talking about cash. You at some point will meaningfully exit some of your currency units into stuff in the real world, you know, stuff. And if you, if you don't do that, you, 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 you haven't won. It doesn't matter on paper where you're at. If you don't materially change your life or whatever, your friends, your family, whatever. Okay. So keep that in mind. So 50% of the portfolio needs to be protocol layer, layer ones. Then 10, at least 10%, uh, eight to 10% needs to be layer one, uh, layer twos. Okay. So we'll call Matic layer two, uh, one, which is a cheap layer two, layer two. Okay. Get some good layer two. Harmony is going into these um, under collateralized lending, which is a lot like banking system, which I'm very excited about. Okay. Then you can experiment a little bit. Keep 10% in stable asset, not, not Terra's token and not Tether. Anything with a T, stay away from it. USDC is probably fine. Uh, you Or you might hold a variety of stable assets, a few, but keep about 10% of your net worth in stable assets so that you can deploy them dollar cost average deployment when the market should deteriorate as it has been the last few months if you if you had some stable coin you did really well if you had some extra some extra cash units that you could convert you, you probably did pretty well over these last few months you're not you're not singing the blues like a lot of people are okay um if you use nexo nexo um i think you, there's some lottery tickets then I believe you need 10%, 10, 10% of your portfolio, 1,000 basis points uh, in the AI space. And that's going to be simple. AGIX, Singularity DAO, Fetch, NewNet. Now, what is the order? Well, that's a little bit different. The order would be, if I was going to order them, I would go AGIX, Fetch, almost even Steven. Okay. So of that 10%, those would be the biggest two AGIX and fetch. And then slightly underneath that singularity Dow, and then slightly underneath that new net. What has the biggest potential to expand? Well, all of them, we don't know financial expansion through singularity Dow as they look at uh, potentially being able to short in the Dynasets, the data is coming in. The Dynasets did really well. So I imagine that's going to be pretty powerful, but you want, you just want an AI basket when, not if, when AI comes in a meaningful way, it's going to, uh, it's going to disintermediate humans in trading. You, you can't win against the robots. If you ever played a video game and the big boss, like it, it knows every move I'm going to do. Yeah. Because you're moving, you're, you're giving it every move you're going to do through your finger inputs. Of course it knows every move you're going to do. You're doing it. Of course the robots win. Have you watched any of the terminators? Come on, man. I always have some stupid paradox that allows the people to like do. Okay. If robots are flying around with lasers, we're dead. All right. So trust me, when the robots come to finance, if you have a computer and a pencil and some, you're dead, dead. <laughs> uh, okay. A lot of the assets are not supported on the cold wallet. Uh, so where can you put them? Um, mm, well, uh, if your wallet is not supporting some of these, go stake them directly with the protocols. That's, that'd be another pretty safe place. Just be careful about your uh, your password, whatever your whatever your system is for holding your passwords and, and storing them and being safe. You know that's the other thing about like owning your value. If you really own your value, you you own it. And so there's the the downside to that is you can lose it. So just be very careful. I like that's why I love staking assets directly with protocols. It's kind of like out of sight, out of mind. Um, why is it that they can't be bought on Coinbase? Uh, well. Most of them are Ethereum based for now. Uh, in the future, at some point, AGIX and NuNet are porting over 
uh, as is Singularity DAO, they're going to have um, versions of the tokens that run on Cardano. So that's going to be pretty important. I think that'll be a big line in the sand whenever it is we get there. Um, they're, they're working towards all these things. Uh, let's see. Cosmos or Polkadot for layer zero. No, th those are layer ones. Those are layer ones. So layer, think of layer zero is the internet, right? And then stacked on top of that is the infrastructure. And those are, those are our layer ones, um, which again, one more time is Ethereum, Cardano, Polkadot, Near Cosmos, Algorand, and any other you feel like throwing in the pile. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Um, and why doesn't Coinbase allow certain assets? Well, Coinbase is, they allow a lot of junk assets. Coinbase is all about jurisdictional uh, rules and regulations. They are just trying to appease the regulators. They're a publicly traded company. There's just a lot they can and can't do right now. A bunch of dummies filed some class action lawsuit saying uh, Coinbase listed a bunch of security tokens which they count like Polkadot, Cardano, like think Algorand, these are all, they so those are securities, unlicensed securities, shut up. It's a bunch of lawyers trying to pull a scam. Um, it is what it is. Anyway, yes, the robots will make us rich and they'll kill us, but they'll kill the rich ones last, I hope. Um, actually, that's not, that's not theoretically right. They probably would kill the rich ones first, take the resources and deploy them towards their overall world dominating uh scheme so maybe ah, crap maybe the rich ones die first but who knows well the point is listen if they if if i'm asleep on my cloud city and they crash it it is what it is it's coming anyway i just want to be on the long end of it i'm long skynet don't call it selling out i call it buying in uh and then and then really quick um looks i believe you want to you want to speculate a little bit. This would be one of your speculative lottery tickets. I think some looks tokens make sense uh, because I think you want some exposure to what the future of the NFT space might look like. And I don't think the future of the NFT space is what is what OpenSea currently looks like. Could OpenSea make changes? Of course. Will they? That is tough to tell if they'll do it in a timely manner. Okay, great. We got that nailed. Let me talk just a little bit for just a couple of minutes. I just want to read you some little factoids about the information age versus the industrial revolution. Okay, so information age, where we're at now, industrial revolution, uh, as we were coming out of war and the world was changing and it was starting to, to globalize. Um, but just some things to think about as far as what kind of wealth creation one might expect, or at least... Uh, transformation generation. Um, I think wealth creation makes the most sense. The information age is likely about 3,000 times more impactful due to factors such as uh, waterfront exposure. Like there's 300 times when we globalize uh, in the information age, you have 300 times the waterfront exposure. Progress uh, in technology tends to occur about 10 times faster. Uh, it affects more industries in real time. So iterative, iterative upgrades to industry can be felt much more dramatically, much quicker, which can create other iterative changes, right? So if one person over here solves a problem, everybody else benefits, and that's a new problem they don't have to solve, which lets, and this is kind of why you start looking at AI and look at the idea that you would have these giant networks of AI agents all working together, all solving little problems that help them all solve other little problems. And the evolution of that, of tech can go really, really fast. Um, productivity outside of the information, uh, outside of information is flat or lower for 50 years. Uh, it's kind of a, the, the death of a thousand cuts. If you look at the information age, how will it affect like humans? So you tend to see um, human productivity um, as far as physical effort decrease being replaced by technology um, and, and part of the information age and part of the iterative upgrade of technology and machines and machine learning, it, it tends to relegate humans out of the workforce, um, making them less, uh, humans have less utility in the workforce because robots and tech do more stuff. So it's kind of common sense. Like a robot's not gonna call in pregnant. Uh, or whatever, or like, but, but there's also, sort of, anyway, not to go down that path, but you get it. Um, and so the kind of the canary in the coal mine are these jobless recoveries we see 
like in, in these financial markets where technology tends to obviate workers more and more. And that is celebrated uh, by shareholders and celebrated by the price of stock, by, by the price of equities typically, and, and not so celebrated by all of the people that are working that get pushed off to the sidelines. It's like, oh, we brought in robots to do your job. Crap. So, and this has been, this isn't just now, this has been throughout time, but now these, these iterative upgrades in tech happen so much faster. Um, decentralized assets and governance is curiously about one thirty-five hundredth of the current addressable financial system. Another way to say that as far as um, derivative products and things, if you look at the current base of total money units, currency units, uh, let's let's give it three, three and a half quadrillion. So that's three and a half, 3.5 thousand trillion, 3,500 trillion, okay? That's the addressable uh, currencies in all spaces. And if you took those and just transitioned those into somewhat decentralized ways or used bits and pieces of decentralized tech to ease those tensions or many of those tensions, you look at where we are now, a little bit, uh, one and a half trillion. That means that there's about a three, a, a two and a half to three and a half. So a 2,500 to 3,500 X. So 3,000 X is the potential. If you absorb the current system and you ease frictions and tensions with decentralized and distributed solutions. Just can you keep that? Does that mean all currency units going to come over? No. There's always going to be some grandma somewhere holding onto her gold coins. Like I can pinch them with my teeth. But the the larger scale, the bigger swath of finance, financial products, and markets are going to use whatever is the the least friction tool they can to get one up on their competitors. Or the robots that enter those markets will do it. Is just a normal course of business. So either way, it's going to happen. Right now, you have a couple of a stodgy, you know, silver hairs that are holding on, you know, for that are hodling the old ways. That too shall pass. Uh, we're likely to see basic income guarantees, universal basic income, et cetera. These kind of programs that start to tack on newly created um, national currency units, which would become real inflation, real inflation through debasement. You'll see savings, purchasing power being destroyed. Again, we're not there yet, but these are some of the things that look like they're coming with this kind of socialization of everything, the social welfare kind of idea. Um, more distribution of wealth, giving back, this whole idea that we need to give back. And listen, give back if, if, if somebody stole, if we had a situation like we just had in 2021 and 2020 where 90% of the stimulus money was hoovered up by 1% of the population. Well, that's trucked up. Don't you think? Like, I'm not, I'm not a one. I don't even know what the one percenter is. I think to be in the top 0.01%, you have to have 20 million. So I'm not that. But, but, um, I know some people that are that pulled incredible scams. And if people pull incredible scams, I'm all for grappling that back and distributing it because it, that is not, that's not what stimulus was meant to be. I'm not, a, I'm not saying I agree or disagree with stimulus, but stimulus wasn't meant to be put into the system for 13 seconds and then hoovered up by, by a very, very tiny group of core a-holes. That's, that's not, I don't think, what the intent was. So that just feels really gross to me. Anyway, they'll frame all of, but then again, they can take that and they can beat that drum and go too far with it too. It doesn't mean that everybody that was successful over the last two years, it's just because they stole stimulus money from Joe Sixpack because he doesn't know any better. Although that that is a lot of it, but, but it's not all of it, right? So again, uh, distribution of wealth, social justification for redistribution, anti-whale maneuvers, all that kind of stuff. Like you guys know, I'm not a big fan of Elon Musk. I like him as an engineer, but I don't like him as a businessman because I don't think he is one really. But Elizabeth Warren was going on this tirade. Oh, we should change the tax law so that guy, so that people like Elon Musk don't, you know, 
richest people don't pay, steal, all this kind of crap. Like basically saying he wasn't paying taxes. And then he came back and said, I'm paying more taxes than any American in history. And she did not uh, rebuttal that. She got real quiet. It's time for the Elizabeth Warrens and that that cohort to to step it on down. Um, I think I think you are done. We thank you for your service. Uh, it is time for you to go, Nancy Pelosi. You've been stealing from the Americans by through insider trading for many many decades. It's time for you to go, Jerome Powell. Time for you to go. You've been stealing from Americans for many decades. It's time for you to go. Oh, not just stealing, though. Not just stealing. Lying about it and stealing. I like how the the first two people that got caught at the Fed that were insider trading or tra basically trading on private Fed news, within 24 hours, they had resigned. And Jerome, big old big ear Jerome Powell, feels like, well, I'm the boss. I ain't going to resign. We're allowed to do this. These guys got to go, man. They got to go. Janet Yellen, you got to go. You and Hillary can go talk about the way things should have been, the way things used to be. That's fine. Go sit on a rocking chair at a retirement village with your millions of dollars of ill-gotten gains. Career politicians shouldn't be richer than everybody else in their caucus. Does that make any GD sense? No, man. These people are so sketch and we vote them back in because it's, we don't know the other person. So they'll frame all of this, this kind of socialization of everything. And also, by the way, it's, well, that'd be a whole other show. But anyway, it's, it's not so genuine. The people that are framing these arguments, it's not true. They're not trying to give back. J just understand that. Uh, they're trying to take new money and distribute. They're not trying to give back. They're, you know, Elizabeth Warren's not giving her money back. She doesn't feel so compelled. She still feels like at least she's on the good. She's on the right side of the insider trading thing. But like Nancy Pelosi will talk all about, you know, basic human rights and health care and housing, education, uh, basic income stipends, Internet access, all this. But she's not willing to give back any of the ill-gotten, any of the quarter billion dollars of completely stolen fraudulent money that she that she absolutely sniped with insider information being a career politician. She's not willing to do that. She means the new money. Let's distribute the new money under the auspices of basic human rights, healthcare, housing, education, basic income stipends, internet access for all, woo woo. Just not my money. <laughs> you wanna see her backpedal? Just go look at any of those press conferences where they ask her about insider trading. She's like, what? Oh, I, I, I. can't even get a word out of her. Government as a guardrail. That's the idea. Government's the guardrail. And it's just not a bad idea. Let markets be markets, but but there needs to be some boundaries to bad behavior. And that's where the government steps in. And I kind of, I tend to agree with that. There is a place for government. Anarchy doesn't work so well. And and so in areas where you have land and capital surplus, labor, labor scarcity, okay, um, there's a benefit from reinforcing individuals' rights and someone has to kind of step in sometimes and say, whoa, 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 enough is enough. Nancy, enough is enough. Jerome, Janet, you insider trading PO pieces of ship. <laughs> like enough is enough. The problem is the, the guardrail is it's the old guard. The guardrail are the same people stealing. So until we there's some churn it's the same people jacking us that are supposed to be in charge of preventing other people from jacking us. They're like, we will steal, but we're not going to let anyone else do it. Oh, got it. Right. So we're, we're actually, this is great. Then we're these shepherds of society and finance. We, I sleep better at night knowing Jerome Powell's at the helm of nothing. <laughs> um, we basically live in this world where we we don't have to trust other people and we don't this is the world we actually live in you don't have to trust anybody don't trust me obviously don't trust you don't have to trust anybody you don't have to trust your politicians and you shouldn't you don't have to trust bankers and you shouldn't you don't have to trust anybody in public service and you shouldn't verify everything 
Trust nothing. Question everything. And if you don't, if you're not getting answers, just leave. Go to another group. Effing bounce, man. Bounce. If you're in a group where they don't like questions, bounce. You don't need to trust any of these a-holes. We have this new thing called algorithmic integrity. In math, we trust. All others, go truck yourselves. Right? We have math now algorithmic integrity. We don't need any of this other stuff. Most of this governance, we do not need. We can do it with math. We'll be doing it with robots. These big old rooms full of politicians sucking on the government, teat, that stuff's coming to an end, bro. Right now you say, no, well, just wait. So uh, another principle I wanna throw at you is the idea of constrained optimization. Um, taking whatever resources you have, no matter how scarce they are, no matter how random they appear to be, and create the maximum amount of utility with those random bits and pieces, okay? Constrained optimization, maximalization, okay? And so, and this is, this kind of all starts to reduce, this, this whole argument's kind of reducing down into a microeconomics environment, you know, the, uh, little e, and so you start to go, okay, I'm in this crypto space. How do I reduce my thinking? Reduce, 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 reduce to the super simple so that I can make good choices so that three to five years from now my life is better. And that is on, on a crypto token, a digital asset token. What good or service does the token offer? Okay. How does it get produced or utilized in any or many systems? And who will use it? If you can't answer those questions, it's not really, there. it doesn't pass the Y token met. So this is inside Y token. This is your Y token, okay? It is. What good or service does the token do? How does it get produced or utilized in A or many systems? And who will use it? Maybe even throw in. And why would they suddenly not use it? Uh, be able to explain to yourself in three ways, any, any mathematical situation or economic situation. So what I mean by that is this is just about, this is like a visualization thing. If you, if you want to truly understand a principle in economics, you need to explain, you need to explain it intuitively, understand it intuitively, be able to represent it graphically, like a visual representation. Okay. And then have some mathematical proof or formula behind it that validates both your intuitive thought and the and the graphical, uh, the visual representation, right? There, that is all. So we started big, all the way small. So you wanted to distill that information age versus industrial revolution, the, the last big one that made all these people wealthy. This one, there's no barriers to entry. We can all participate. And there's a 3,500X on the table. Do you want to go chase a bunch of bull truck coins or do you want to create a quality portfolio that will stand the test of time because it is mostly protocol based? It is mostly layer one. It's your choice. You do you. Uh, I don't know if there is a right answer. I mean, I know that if you look at history, there is clearly a right answer. Value investors win, traders lose. If you look into the future as AI, like with Singularity Dow, starts to enter the fray and you have quants, the smartest humans on earth, plus the smartest AI, narrow AI, all working together on earth to manage money. It's better than a dude managing money. Like it is what it is. All of us, all the people that manage money are going to get pushed to the side. You know who's going to win? The people that invest in the right management technologies. Being able to judge, being able to ask yourself, all these questions, being, being able to ask questions is going to be worth a lot more than knowing the answer to the questions. If you can frame questions quickly, you're going to win. Google, bro. Google. All right. Um, let's get out of here. Have a good one. We'll see you. Uh, well, we'll see you tomorrow on Money Map. Otherwise, stay out of trouble. Stay in school. Don't do drugs. Don't do anything. My poor insolvent drunk struggling on meth. Grandmother wouldn't do. As you know, that is not very much because she does... Uh, so, so many, so many drugs so often. That's grandma. Okay. Deuces.
Ooh, which outro? Which outro do we play? There's so many choices.